things that the speaker can't actually make it. So what we have decided to convert this into is three lightning talks. And I think three of them have already signed up here. So we'll just go one after the other. Uh, it's a five minute talk per person. After five minutes, I will, the timer will actually go off and you're supposed to get off the podium, right? And uh, we have three. So tomorrow also there's one more slot like this where we are doing more lightning talks. So if you have more ideas, uh, you want to come up and speak for five minutes, please do come in this room during that time. So actually on this schedule, it does show that there is a lightning talk session tomorrow, okay? So without any delay, I guess, uh, we go. And if you want to do, you can do too. So we yeah, have only. If you have time, I can So now three got killed. Right. Yeah. Very <laughs> So you start speaking. Hello. Yeah, like, um, so I just uh, wanted to, uh, you know, share about uh, what actually success means in an agile world. So, you know, in a waterfall world, uh, we define success in a lot of terms like, uh, you know, uh, delivery time and a uh, uh, lot of funders are there. So basically, uh, so how do you define success? So I uh, read a book like uh, The Art of Agile Development and in that they have defined three types of success. So one is organizational success and one is technical success and the one is uh, personal success. So and uh, three of them are uh, equally important because uh, without a personal success, uh, you know, you cannot motivate yourself and you cannot, you know, motivate your, uh, you know, team and employees. And without a technical success, you know, one day or the other, your project is going to, you know, break without, because of its errors. And uh, the last, the personal success, uh, and last, the most important thing, the organizational success. The organizational success is the key factor because, you know, organization is funding for your uh, project and, you know, like, the value you provide to the organization through the, you know, your work is the most important thing. Because if you don't provide any value to the organization, then the, you know, whole purpose of doing that project itself is uh, of, you know, no use. So, uh, and um, how Agile help us? So, you know, like, uh, for organizational success and technical success, Agile, uh, you know, provides us various methodologies like, you know, Scrum and um, XP and all those things. Because f uh, one of the things for organizational success is, you know, deliver you know, if you are creating a, you know, website for a particular concept and by the time you, you know, you go through all the processes and finally deliver the project, if there are, you know, a number of uh, other participants, you know, in the market, then, you know, the profit, what you thought of getting initially would have, you know, you'll never get that profit. So instead, you know, you deliver the most, you know, valuable things and then, you know, like um, the most required features and then add on based on a customer feedback and user feedback, then it will be you know, more uh, valuable because you need to change, you need to, you know, adapt or you need to change the requirements of the market and make sure the uh, organization gets a value to the delivery of that project. And then uh, comes the technical uh, side. The technical side is, uh, you know, it's also very important. And uh, so, you know, let, so the XP practices. So helps you a lot in, you know, making sure the, your code is better and you know you understand it well and you you know the code should be s strong enough and uh, free of errors and all those things pair programming and all those xp steps will come into that and the uh, last but you know like uh, also important thing is the personal success part but you know like unlike uh, organizational success and uh, the other one uh, technical success agile doesn't provide much you know like uh, methodologies or uh, you know practices to get uh, personal success, but what I feel is like, you know, if you actively participate in all the, you know, methodologies and uh, all the, the things you follow in the other things, you know, the experience that you get, you can take forward, you know, that will be a very good, uh, you know, uh, learning curve. But, and uh, so actually uh, what I would like is, you know, if I had time, so I would uh, so like to hear and uh, learn about how within your scrum teams you or within your you know organization within your agile project how you try to get that motivation how you try to get the personal success because that is something which not is not defined like the other things so you can uh, uh, talk to me after this or you know i have a blog 
called uh, java j e e dot com so you can uh, just i have written uh, this as a small block in the extract session so you can just uh, comment over it or just uh, talk to me or uh, share across what you do for you know like uh, getting that personal success Nice. This is Chad Wathington. I uh, work for ThoughtWorks. And uh, we just recently announced uh, the day before yesterday that one of our products, Go, uh, is now on the path to be open source uh, and is freely available. And I wanted to tell you about why that's actually a great thing and why it's important and why we did it. So. Uh, I think most people in the room probably know what continuous delivery is. If you know what continuous delivery is, can you raise your hand? So uh, Jez Humble is here uh, and uh, has obviously with um, David Farley written a book about how to improve your software development processes such that your code is always ready to be in production and how that changes kind of the cycle time of getting uh, an idea and something built and, and putting it out for customers to use. Well, when Jez was uh, working on that book, he was also building a product. And we built a product to support the ideas that we thought were really important. So deployment pipelines as a concept, this idea that you want to build code, uh, you want to integrate it and test it like you would do in CI, but then you want to do a bunch of other things to it as it goes down to production. So you may want to do integration tests in a completely different environment, or you may want to do security testing, or you may want to check that this version of a service works with another version of a service, or it's dependent on this component. There's a ton of different things that you do in actually making a, a bit of code actually be ready to be deployed in production, and Go helps you automate and control and manage all of that and give you great visibility into it. So we open sourced it, and we did that because we thought, okay, CD is really important. We want CD to be ma mainstream. We want every team on the planet to be doing continuous delivery. And ThoughtWorks has a kind of history of thinking that way with continuous integration. It was a practice, a manual practice. And then we built Cruise Control, which is the first CI server, uh, so that people could actually do the practice for real. And we feel that Go is the same thing for CD. We feel like it's the tool support and the infrastructure to do it. So it's open source. You can go check it out. You can download it for your project. You can start using it just to do CI uh, as a basic thing. And it's at www.go.cd. Uh, and the code's not available yet, but it will be. And we want contributors. So if you've got an itch to scratch and you're thinking about, wow, we're doing some DevOps in my, my uh, organization, and we've got a bunch of different things going on. and wow, it would be great if Go supported this. We love for people to contribute uh, their time and their code and their thoughts. So that's it. Nice. Two minutes. Ago. Why are you following Agile? Because it's tradition, it's trendy, or it's geeky? OK. So actually, uh, being geek is sometimes expensive. I'm not a geek yet, but I would like to be a geek. So when I looked at most of the geeks, they were using Mac. So I bought a Mac. And then I decided, OK, till I became a geek, at least I code on Mac. <laughs> OK, so the warning. So yesterday I was thinking myself uh, as an intermediate in Agile. And uh, I've reduced my level to beginner after some speaks. So basically, some of the things which I may talk here, might not make sense, OK? So bear with it. Uh, the problem we see is uh, when we start practicing Agile as a tradition or as a trendy, because it's trendy or uh, because it looks geeky to practice Agile, uh, is we'll be ta tailoring the practices to fit into our comfort zone. We'll not be really understanding or we'll not be really looking at how we have to do the things or what's important, what's not important. But mostly because it looks trendy, traditional, and geeky, we'll uh, tailor fit it to our comfort zones. For example, TDD, it's all about how we do it, right? You can make a test pass if your intention is just to make the test pass instead of going into why that test is failing. 
because of race conditions or if you just increase the timing or if you put a delay if the test passes there are a lot of ways of making the test pass but it's how we do it and how do you basically why do you want to uh, or how do you uncover the bugs inside and basically along with agile it's very important for us to consider the continuous improvement aspect right people practices and performance this forms a triangle it's very important for us to consider this aspect and have a feedback mechanism and work continuously on it if you take for efficiency quotient as an example why do you want to stick on to that it's not your spouse to hang on forever right it's just a efficiency quotient why don't you move on it why don't you move further ahead on it why don't you look what's your efficiency quotient now and why don't you do something to increase it why don't you talk about reducing the turnaround times so basically i believe whatever you do if it's not personal it's not 100% basically you won't be putting 100% any work and i very much firmly believe that the value stream in place is the value stream you can deliver if you don't have the right value stream in place don't even expect to deliver the value stream to the customer so usually it will be always less than the whatever value stream you can deliver it will be always less than the value stream in place that's how the that's the fact actually so when you start practicing agile so you should be ready to face the challenges right it's uh, it involves lot of human factor so you should be ready to you know you should be ready to face those emotional challenges and you should be ready to convince people somebody will be ready to do the things somebody will not be ready to do the things the acceptance criteria becomes a big bottleneck over there and the least thing you have to do here when you want to practice agile or when you want to practice anything is at the end you know don't lie to lie to yourself at least be open to it and see where you stand and uh, you know how exactly you are improving things and stuffs like that or how it's helping you or how it's not helping you that's very important aspect right you should be able to make a progress and that's the reason we all here today so we want to learn something and we want to move on from where do we exactly stand otherwise you know you just uh, basically like if you are following agile for the sake of tradition or for you know for the sake of just because it looks trendy or for the sake of you know it's it's cool and it's geeky to follow agile uh, you just look like the same way i look like here today with completely an odd dress hard attire you know you can anybody can have any kind of feeling about me right what this guy, guy is doing here this agile international conference and he's standing here and uh, with all this <laughs> funny attire and stuff so if you're following agile for the for the sake of tradition or for the sake of uh, you know being geeky or being trendy you exactly look like the same way i look like today so understand it and then you know follow it analyze it think about it come back you know criticize it criticizing is very important aspect for us to go forward criticize it thank you things or geeky things or traditional things uh, please do come uh, uh, next yeah, day, like tomorrow we have one more slot and you can come propose a topic. It's like whoever shows up uh, gets to speak <coughs> for five minutes. Thank you.